This week on CrossFeed. California to outlaw marriage? I think I'm a clone now. Give up texting for Lent? LOL. Porn in the USA. And Connecticut is doomed. Hello, everyone, and welcome to CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of St. Paul Lutheran Church of Delaware, Iowa. Hey, I'm Pastor Jim Butler out here in beautiful Dedham, Massachusetts. Welcome this week to this week's CrossFeed News, where we give interviews, comments, opinions on the news. We do the same thing Katie Kirk, Katie Kirk does every week, but we're not as good looking. <laughs> Speak for yourself. And we're honest about it. <laughs> Well, I just, you know, mm, considering Russell, listening to you sing there, I don't know. We're also honest about our biases. That's right. And Jim keeps blacking out for some reason. It's probably my low bandwidth. I said last time that I'd have faster bandwidth this time. And we're supposed to have faster bandwidth, but it really isn't. Any faster, as far as we can tell. So I'm not sure what's going on there. But. Well, it's like the government that, you know, they're going to, you know, spend, you know, this much more money in the next five years. And then they decide not to spend it. So they're going to save all that money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can have a lot lower, you know, bandwidth, you know, but, you know, they're going to, you know, you know, say it's higher. But then, you know, it's, it really is, you know, compared to you know, what could be. It's one of those things, you know, you got to work it out. I'm sorry, I'm in a very political mood tonight. What can I tell you? Oh. Well, if you want to talk politics, maybe we should talk about President Obama. Oh, hey. And he kept his campaign promise and went in to um, uh, sign the, the bill for um, uh, uh, embryonic stem cells. But, however, he says it will not be to cloning. Yep. Never. I never not, ever. Well, it's, cross my heart, hope to die. It, uh, unless you're talking about cloning embryos to use for stem cell research, you can clone them as long as you destroy them right away. You know, it's it's sort of like saying, "Dear, let's have a baby so that we can donate it to science." <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's great. Um, and, and well, I see. Here, here's the deal, okay? He said, on one hand, he says we cannot ever tolerate misuse or abuse. We will ensure that our government never opens the door to the use of cloning for human reproduction. It is dangerous, profoundly wrong, and has no place in our society or any society. However, on the other hand, he says by opening the door to embryonic stem cell research, it rejects the false choice between religion and morality. Well, I mean, between uh, science and morality. Well, if it's a false choice, and yeah. human cloning is science. <laughs> yeah. How can you say it's immoral? Hmm. I yeah, was wondering you, the same you, thing. You know, how could you say it's dangerous and profoundly wrong? It's science. And science is supposed to trump morality here. Back off, man. I'm a scientist. So... um he he says that there's uh, broad bipartisan support. Really, I I I don't think I've that I've I've met. I mean, I'm sure there are, uh, you know, Republican representatives out there who uh, who are in favor. But uh, I wouldn't say broad unless they're talking about their waistbands. So. Well, no, uh, I mean somebody like Orrin Hatch would be. But Mormons don't believe uh, uh, children before a certain age are truly human, are persons. So uh, many Mormon um, sen senators and re representatives do not have a problem with abortion. Really? I know mm – -hmm. wow, I, I know a lot of Mormons, actually, and they're all against abortion. Or maybe it's uh, embryos, but uh, stem cell research. But yeah, I did – uh, we actually had a guy from Lutherans for Life who, who who went into that and showed right out of uh, Mormon stuff where it would be allowed. 
But maybe one of our Mormon listeners that wants to tell me I'm wrong, please, please let me know. Uh, I might be wrong. Yeah. I, I am citing somebody else's research. Although I, I just read that the other day, too, on uh, one new site. Uh, but be that as it may. Um, but he says he's going to base his policies on sound science and not political considerations. All right. What is the sound science that he's talking about when it comes to embryonic stem cell research? He's certainly not talking about any sound scientific discoveries because there haven't been any. Right. It's all but adult stem cells. Yeah. Matter of fact, you see, the other thing is, is yeah, that he's going to allow research on existing stem cells that under the Bush administration were off limits. No, they were never off limits. The federal government could not fund them. Private groups could fund them. State governments could fund them. There is a ton of groups out there that could fund them. Just not the federal government. They were never, quote, off limits, unquote. Yeah. All this is doing is opening up money. It's not opening That's up right. stem cells. Right. I, and the money's always been open. Massachusetts spends on it. California spends on it. Uh, so, you know, if you wanted to do it, there, there, there's money out there and even government money. Just not federal government money. So House Minority Leader John, uh, is it Boehner? Boehner. Okay. Um, issued a uh, statement, mm. must be a typo here, um, immediately after the signing, accusing Obama of contradicting his pledge to be the president for all Americans. He's rolled back important protections for innocent life, further dividing our nation at a time when we need greater unity to tackle the challenges before us. Um, so, well, yeah, he's certainly not the president for all Americans, you know, not the unborn ones. So, And Boehner went on to say non-embryonic stem cell research is not only showing great promise in the laboratory, but its applications are already being used to street, treat scores of diseases and medical conditions. Which is absolutely true. Uh, People are being healed today. Politicians in Washington would be well served to recognize this fact. Uh, and don't forget, was it a year ago that they learned how to inject skin cells with a gene which makes them blank? Into stem cells all over again? Yeah, yeah. It makes them pretty much identical to uh, embryonic stem cells. So, um, so, so yeah. So there are gifts that science has given that he's rejecting. Right. Yeah. I mean, we don't need to destroy embryos to have what are, for all practical purposes, for, for scientific use, embryonic stem cells, because they're not actual embryos. All right? This is not about science. This is about politics. This is about money. All right. So at a time that, that our nation needs lots of money, we're using it on what is ultimately is cannibalism, right? You're taking a human being, uh, breaking that human being up into parts and injecting that human being into somebody else, all right? You're taking a human being and putting it inside of somebody else, right? That's cannibalism. And that's what our tax dollars are going to go for. Disgusting. So yeah. the, the sad thing here is that, you know, uh, many of these embryos all eventually would have been destroyed anyway because they have a certain lifespan. There are a lot of them are from IVF clinics. Um, and, you know, that – when you talk about your rock and hard places, when they create, because because not every embryo grows to, to to being a child and the mother, so they make a whole bunch of embryos. Uh, of course, that's what a lot of times when they then implant many, uh, as in the octuplet mom, and then they quote selectively abort some of them. You know, and this this comes back again. I think we said it a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the one book or movie. You oh, just because you could, you never considered whether it was right. Yeah, it's um, from uh, Jurassic Park, uh, Jeff Goldblum's Jurassic character. Um, yeah, you were so concerned about whether you could, you never stopped and asked whether you should. Right. And, yeah, science is advancing at such a fast pace. Morality never enters into it. They never stop and ask. It's um, another great movie um, that that I love. Very funny movie, actually. Um, uh, Real Genius. One of Val Kilmer's uh, first movies. Very early movies, yes. Yeah. And, oh, 
great movie. They uh, they design this laser, and then all of a sudden, you know, and and hey, we did it, and everything, and and then um, all of a sudden they go, wait, what's this going to be used for? And they realize that it's going to be used as a weapon. Um, that and they're not real thrilled with that, and then so they, you know, they deal with it in their own way. But you know, it's that same kind of thing. Well, what do you think they're going to use it for? Oh, I don't know. That's up to somebody else to decide. We just, you know, wanted to see if we could do mm-hmm. it. You know. Yeah, well, I think they already have a a reason for doing it. So, well, you know, back in the 1930s and 40s, there were two um, com- two books that offered alternating views of the future: Orwell's 1984 and Huxley's Brave New World. Yep. I'll let you guess which one won. Hint: It wasn't um, Orwell. I think you know what the problem is yeah. just as well as I do. You know, Huxley, Huxley talking about designer babies, talking about uh, the tyranny of entertainment. He, he's the one who won. He was the one who, who, who predicted things correctly. Yep, he nailed it. Yep, and it's very sad. Yeah. Oh, man, I'll tell you, we got a lot of depressing stories tonight, don't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah, but speaking of predictions, how about those people in Connecticut? Oh man! Well, you know, being between Massachusetts and Rhode Island, I understand how they can have serious problems. You know, I mean, uh, you know, Connecticut, Massachusetts on top of them, Rhode Island's one end, and New York's on the other. Well, according to David Wilkerson, the founding pastor of the Times Square Church in New York City, Connecticut. Uh, t- uh, yeah, is yeah. Okay. Doomed. Doomed. Absolutely. Okay. David Wilkerson, of course, uh, probably better known, not so much for Times Square Church, as he is for his books Across the Switch, Switchblade and his um, Teen Challenge Ministries, which, you know, has kind of spun off into his own comp- group, uh, you know, all around America. But really probably better known for, yeah, his book, uh, The Cross and the Switchblade, about his ministry to the inner city kids. Now, this is the second or third book uh i think of predictions i've heard from him i remember back in the 70s he had a book called uh the vision uh and at the time i was a real david wilkerson fan because i just read the cross and the switchblade and i thought what he was doing then was really cool and um i don't know 15 16 so i got that book and i remember you know his predictions there in that book he you know that he had um get used to disappointment Yeah, it's well, one thing. By the way, just just to say, I the person who wrote this, Leanne Gendro, was overly snarky. Yeah, I mean, you know, I talked about the beginning, you know, joke, joking, you know, that you know this, you know, we we do the same thing all the other reporters do, you know, give you our opinion, you know, we're just at least honest about it. Um, and the way this is written, I mean, it's 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 really a a, a hit piece and a smear job and a. Um, it's not straight news. I mean, it's just the language that she uses. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. It, his divine message is a little murky. For instance, did it did it not come with useful information, including where and when damnation would strike? Are people in Greenwich safe? How about Mystic or East Hartford? Well, or the, well, I mean, uh, talking about uh, grocery stores emptying and the sign of impending disaster and she says maybe he has stock in some company that makes toilet paper this is his plan to replenish his 401k all right so yeah yeah i mean all right so you, you got to set that aside but all right here's the urgent yeah. message that he wrote um on his blog for 10 years i've been warning about a thousand fires coming to new york city it'll engulf the whole megaplex including areas of new jersey and connecticut Major cities all across America will experience riots and blazing fires, such as we saw in Watts, Los Angeles, years ago. Right? But she also notes that um, uh, in 1994, he called for the end of the gospel on television by 1999, um, which obviously didn't come true. But then he said, "Uh, note, I do not know when these things will come to pass. But I know it is not far off. I have unburdened my soul to you. Do with the message as you choose. Um, I don't know. I have a, a couple of thoughts about all this. Uh, 
you know, a thousand fires coming to New York City, engulfed the whole megaplex, including areas in New Jersey and Connecticut. Obviously, he's never been in Jersey. It already looks like that there in a lot of places, you know. <laughs> it's called Newark. Um, yeah, you know, there's places. Um, well, you know, you know. Uh, all right. There's always the question, you know, why do why does uh, Jersey have the most toxic waste dumps and California has the no- mo- most lawyers? Because Jersey got the first choice. <laughs> <laughs> You know what the difference between a dead skunk and a dead lawyer on the road is? Skid marks in front of the skunk. I've heard that one. <laughs> well, all, all of our Okay, um, I, I'm lawyer, really getting off topic um, here, folks. <laughs> you're, you're getting off screen, too. You probably want to center yourself because people, right. people you better really see half myself. your face. <laughs> um, but... Hopefully it's a good half. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, no, I'll tell you. It, it, he's worried about Connecticut. But has he been to Bridgeport? I mean, that is not an area. I mean, that you know, uh, um, not even New Haven really is very nice. Uh, you know, Westport, that's part of the Gold Coast. Then Greenwich, it depends on parts of Greenwich. Some of them are very nice and others are not. Um, <clears throat> but Bridgeport, whoo, that's a, that's a sad area. Anyway, um, yeah, you know, what this, you know what this is? Enthusiasm. Yeah. Yeah, that's the word. Um, or Luther called it the schwärmer. Yeah. People claiming that the Holy Spirit is talking to them when he is in fact not. All right. There's a couple ways that we can tell just by looking at the information we have here. First of all, he's been wrong before. All right. True, a true mm-hmm. prophet of God is never, ever, ever wrong. Right. When they say God said, then that's the way it is. And mm-hmm. they are never wrong because God's never wrong. <coughs> right. So that's the first way that we can tell. I mean, that's the big, giant, you know, Perkins size red flag. Okay. And um, so then the other way is that he says, you can do with the message as you choose. All right. When God has a warning, usually it goes along with something like, repent, not, eh, do what you want, you know, by fire right. extinguishers. What? <laughs> you know, I, I mean, what's the point? You know, when God has a message, there's a point to it. It's not just to be, you know, to, to be a, a Nostradamus or uh, what's his name, uh, Edward Casey or, you know. Uh, you know. On the other hand, I mean, a lot of the oracles against the nation, the Old Testament, he just protects doom. He never talks the word about it, you know, if they repent or if they change, because these people had, you know, pretty much walked away from God. Um, <coughs> so it was I mean, an already is, kind you know, of thing. Yeah, but maybe it was a it was supposed to be an oracle against the nation or something. I don't know, uh, but um, you know, I just. I like David Wilkerson, I would, you know, and I do have a lot of respect for a lot of the work he's done. But uh, this, this, I don't know. I just don't want yeah, to get off on the, you know, let's make a predict, you know, the predictions here, um, because who knows? Yeah, you know, I mean, it reminds me of uh, my uh, when my daughter was my daughter was in eighth grade, Kelly, when uh, in 1999 when we we're getting ready for. You know Y two K, and uh, she had this uh, one girl in her class at uh, First Lutheran who was a very fundy Baptist. You know, very very fundy Baptist, and uh, <clears throat> who was like, "You mean you guys aren't stockpiling food or anything?" Fear of a name only increases fear of the thing itself. Yeah, because they had all the Y two K disasters. Yep, yep. We bought a gallon of water. No, we bought like three gallons of water. Of just, you know, plain old drinking water. Like 50 cents a gallon. Just because we figured, ah, eh, just in case something gets messed up, we'll need drinking water until the, you know, for the first few hours until they get it straightened out or whatever. But, um, 
<laughs> that I was bought a six extent. pack beer. <laughs> Our commandments clearly state that beer is all right. <laughs> so I, th I think we bought some champagne too, you know, but that was just for New Year's. Uh, so uh, wherever should we go here? Uh, speaking of poorly done things, let's talk about this um, uh, from Triple X Church. By the way, Triple uh, X Church dot com. I have a lot of respect for them. It's an interesting ministry dealing with pornography. Um, and uh, they, they offer, by the way, a free thing. If you are a person struggling with pornography, uh, that uh, what it does, it goes on your computer, and if there, you go to a questionable website, it will send an email to your accountability partner. And then, uh, you know, so there's great, better uh, discussion between you and someone else and, and, and things. Uh, and then they, they'll also sell a, a filter and stuff as well. Uh, but, I mean, these guys go to porn store, porn shows and you know, talk about Jesus with these people in the pornography industry. Um, so they're, they're really a neat group, a couple of guys, kind of emergent church, postmodern um, pastors. But they're talking in this this article about the um, the study um, <clears throat> and uh, by uh, uh, Benjamin Edelman at the Harvard Business School. Uh, basically, he makes this argument. That uh, you know, oddly enough, uh, states that have banned gay marriage have higher porn use usage online than states that have not banned gay marriage. Yeah, the sort of the red states, the the states where um, where people agree, where people agree with the statement, "I have old fashioned values about family and marriage." You know, the, sort of all the places where. Um, people are against, um, well, would presumably be against pornography. Those are the places where people are actually buying it more. Right. Mm -hmm. Not the only places by any means, you know, but there, right. there's a, a, a percentage, you know, right. uh, more. Now, there's a couple problems with his study. Number one, he used data from one and only one adult entertainment company. Okay, if you're going to make a thing about this, you're going to have to get details from more than one company. Yep. You know, that's, 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 that's one you know, uh, problem. He says some of the people who are most outraged turned out to be consumers of the very thing they claim to be outraged by. Uh, the only problem is there's nothing in the study that talks about how outraged people are. He went out and did no dis discussion of how outraged people are. He did not interview people to find out how outraged they are. Um, well, that gets us a little bit of a problem then, doesn't it? Yeah, he makes uh, a lot of assumptions. Right. Um, and then the other thing is, um, um, you know, uh, he wants to argue that, <laughs> but the other thing, you know, they want to argue that the, that the people who are outraged the most are the people using the most. You can't make that. You can say the states they live in. Mm -hmm. You can say these, these more conservative red states are, but that doesn't tell you anything. I mean, it's the same logic that says the, fo the, the, same, the, the, the following. Uh, the four states with the most black, blacks of the percentage of the population are Mississippi, Louisiana, South Carolina, and Georgia. All four voted for John McCain. Based on his, quote, research, unquote, that would be like saying that black populations voted for John McCain. A very nice play. Okay, yeah. You, you can't, you know, yeah, you, you can't yeah. make that kind of statement. Yeah, so, he's, you know, he's jumping to some, some logical fallacies here. Um, right. It, it's, it, you know, because what it could be, it could be that, the those states um it's just they're the the people that are um that are are not or um uh, that, that don't have a problem with it are just buying more um right oh by the way just 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 to let you know mr edelman that uh, back in 2000 they discovered that uh Regions of the country with the highest percentage 
of sex movies in the home video market for all, all voted for Al Gore. Well, there's certainly nothing exciting, you know, watching Al Gore. So, <laughs> <laughs> but Sorry. I mean, you know, I mean, but it's the same, same type of thing. You can't do it. it. Am I saying pornography is not a problem? No, I'm not. It is. Absolutely. It, it used to be, you know, and with the birth of the internet, it's even more. It used to be people had to go down, you know, all these that go to, uh, you know, tacky little stores or, you know, down on what used to be Old Times Square. Um, and then, uh, then it became to the home video market and you had to, you know, at least go down to, uh, certain, um, uh, home video places or, um, you know, you were, could be in a hotel and, and dial in or something or get something on cable. But now with, with internet, pff, it you know, seeks anybody, you out. Yeah, it seeks you out. And it's not only a problem for men, but also for women, much growing problem for women. Right now, the, our past, the, the Council of Presidents, who are the district presidents in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, their estimate is that 40% of the pastors in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod probably engage in pornography. Wow. Yeah. Uh, that's what I was told once, 30 to 40. I mean, it's not, it's, it's just, you know, it seeks you out. Um, and once pe- and people get hooked into it very easily. And one of the ways it gets see, you seek out, of course, is that pornographers will buy dominant, dormant um, uh, domains. I did not know that. Yeah, so well, did, and and they'll use mm-hmm. they'll use keywords that um, that tie in with uh, you know where people are searching for something else. And those keywords will bring up this site. They'll click on it, not realizing what it is, and all of a sudden, boom, there it is. It's in your face. Right. That's why I argue that every computer should be filtered. Um, I mean, I have no more small children in my house, but all our computers are filtered. You know, to prevent that kind of stuff from happening. We use Intego's content barrier for Mac. Very, very, a little bit hypersensitive sometimes, actually. Yeah. Uh, But that's just part of what, you know... It's a thing that we, we felt we should do. Uh, well, the, one of the funniest to me was that uh, the Missouri Synod of Women's Group is called the Lutheran Women's Missionary League, LWML. Well, at one point, they were calling themselves the International Lutheran Women's, Love and, L- Lutheran Women's Missionary League. And so they bought the domain ILWML. Well, nobody knew to go to that. All these little ladies go to LWML.org all the time, and it wouldn't come up. And so finally they said, okay, we're going to just drop this I1 and just put lwnl.org, and that's going to be our domain name. But instead of keeping the old domain and having a pointer go to the new one, they let it expire. And it got bought bought by a pornographer. So can you imagine these little blue hair old ladies? (laughs) Well, They're dressed in their LWML purple, and then they were, you know, punching it. (laughs) Well, the LWML looks a lot different than it used to. <laughs> oh man! Oddly enough, that article was that that story was I've all played the Springfield, Massachusetts newspaper. I mean, there there were there was one LCMS church in the whole city, you know, mine, and so uh, I just thought that was kind of fun that 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 yeah, the only mention we ever got in the paper was was this pornography problem. Um, I guess they the guys actually released it back to the LWML and then they, you know, fixed it for you know put a pointer from there. But yeah, that was a problem there for a while. Well, you know, they'll do all kinds of stuff. Um, and and your thing about filters, that's not a bad idea, um, because because it does seek you out. I mean, you know, I'll do uh, Google searches like Google image searches if I'm looking for a particular picture. And you know what? Would you type in? doesn't have to have anything to do with anything remotely sexual and you can still have images pop up and mm-hmm. and and even with with uh you know Google has its own sort of content filter settings and I have mine set on the strictest setting and I still see stuff that I don't want to see mm-hmm. um now the um I'm pretty impressed with uh, Apple's built-in parental control software. Um, and like, that's what I have set up on my kids' computers. 
and um, and actually, I've got my two youngest ones have computers, and um, for them, I have it. They, they have a whitelist set up. They can only go to a handful of websites that I've specifically approved. All right, mm-hmm. but um, I've got a teenager who needs to be able to do searches and stuff for school. For hers, I have the sort of medium where what it does is before it loads the page, it scans it for anything um, uh, remotely inappropriate and and it just blocks it and and that seems to work pretty well um because before i set that up i know she said like one time she was at a bbc page and it showed up um it was a, a picture of a guy's backside and um and you know she told me about it and um and that you know she wasn't, wasn't what she was looking for you know but it was just a, a image on the screen on the BBC site, um, but this this stuff blocks. It's it's really good about blocking. Um, oh, I forget what she was looking for one time, and and there was some. I was I was going through. Her, I go through her history once in a while just to um, just to make sure that she's not running into some inappropriate stuff, and um, and it's. I saw that a bunch of stuff had been blocked and I went to see what had been blocked. And, um, sure enough, what she was searching on was completely innocent, but there was some stuff that came up and it just blocked the, the actual Google page, um, so that she wouldn't see the, the inappropriate results. So, um, I thought that was pretty good. So, but that'll, that'll block sometimes it, it, if I, I would say it's a little, that's a little oversensitive. Um, because mm-hmm. I saw what on some of the pages what what it had blocked was actually um, legitimate and there was nothing wrong with it, but it was it was sort of misinterpreting um, the words that were there. But I figure better to be oversensitive than undersensitive. Now the only problem right. is um, I run my computer in administrator mode, and you can't set up parental controls under admin mode. Which is kind of frustrating because I'd like to set up that um, content filter for myself so that I don't accidentally stumble across something. There was uh, one time I was going through the um, uh, in my in the server logs for the website. You can look at the referrals to see how did people find our site, what site did they link from, All right? And so I'm I'm you know going down the list and. And and most is mostly Google and you know and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden I'd see some weird site that I didn't recognize, and I go, "Oh, who's that? And why are they linking to us?" You know, and and I click it, and and I closed it real quick <laughs> as soon as I realized what it was. I was. Like, oh, okay, do not click on something that you know that you're not sure what it is, because it, yeah, I mean, and that's it's. There was you know, it's not that that page necessarily had a link to us it, they they've got bots that will send that stuff out and fill up your um your logs with that so that people like me you know go and say oh what's this you know not realizing what it is so right and that's why i, I like having the, the filter because if i hit something like that get automatically you know uh, uh, blocks it and I'm done. So it's. Uh, Is there a I, I really, on that I, one? Hmm. Really? It's one time, uh, huh? Yeah, one time contact, and then there's a yearly update fee. You know, if you want to keep getting the new filters, you know, and stuff, because if you if if it, it is something that that's perfectly legitimate. Uh, one time, I know it. One time, I blocked the LCMS website because there were, uh, there was an article about homosexuality on it. Mm. And so, uh, one time it did, one time it blocked uh, like uh, CNN or something because of something like that. And then you can put in your administrator password, but you can also send them an email and say, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with this this particular site. Um, and then when they put in the upgrades to the next time, then they'll they'll make sure that you know it's set that okay, CNN's always okay. And you can also, by the way, you know, put out. It has a place there where you can put a always block list. You know, here, here, don't don't go on at all. And also, you can have an exception list. Okay. So I so, I do well, like this idea about uh, sending it. Uh, and and see, the problem is this won't. The, what you were talking about before, where it'll 
uh, if you go somewhere inappropriate, it'll send a message to whoever your sort of integrity partner mm -hmm. is, um, which like in my case, my wife and I have separate computers. That would be, you know, perfect for us because, you know, she'd want to know if I were going, you know, to one of those mm -hmm. and and vice versa and i'm not worried about her doing it and she's not worried about me but the problem is that doesn't block um you know you can end up there by accident and right and, you know, in which case you tell block. somebody that it's i ended up there by accident yeah, you, know, you tell right. you to get it that you know i mean just you know um but or you know, you know it's one of those things though that like i didn't want that polluting my head in the first place right yeah. but uh but the thing is, is, you know, this is, again, this is for somebody who finds themselves struggling, kind of like AA, you have an accountability partner, this is something good. So it's something that XXX does offer. Um, but you know what might help? Hold what on, if you just hold on, complete, hold on, hold on, hold on, oh, hold on. There was one part of the study that really caught my attention, though. All right, okay. now, and we talked about the validity of it and everything. On Sundays, um, there was a 0.1% drop in uh, subscriptions where in postal codes where there's um, more religious attendance. Um, but expenditures on other days of the week brought them in line with the rest of the country. In other words, in, in, you know, in areas where there's a lot of uh, religious people and this, nor does this say specifically Christians, but you know, just based on, percentages in the nation and stuff like that you can assume that it's mostly christians that you're talking about um but so on sundays they're not you know they're not spending as much on porn all right but they wait until you know the rest of the week to do it instead you know is that sort of well i can't do it on a sunday that's the lord's day <laughs> i have to wait till tomorrow you know <laughs> it's 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 like up here. It's like where the liquor stores are always closed on Sunday. You know, you you can't buy it on Sunday. You know, it's just you know it's God's day, so you know it's, you know it's okay if you get drunk the rest of the week, but just not on Sunday. Well, you can buy it uh, Saturday night and drink it on Sunday, but you just right. can't buy it on Sunday. Massachusetts got rid of those laws, by the way. It's actually perfectly legal. But maybe maybe going back here, the best thing to do is just to give up all technology for Lent. That would solve it then you'd have to go down to the convenience store and you know get the stuff off the top shelf but yeah so. this would do it and that's the roman catholic church's idea i don't think they're specifically yes. talking about online porn but um no no it's it's given all technology for lent uh roman catholic bishops in italy are saying hey instead of fasting for lent um how about switch off all modern appliances uh, from cars to iPods and abstaining from surfing the web or text messaging until Easter. So this is that new uh, partnership the Catholics have with the Amish. <laughs> <laughs> you know, dioceses and Catholic groups in Modena, South, Southern Bari, and other cities have called for a ban on text messaging every Friday in Lent. Yep. It's a small way to remember the importance of concrete and not virtual relationships. It's an instrument to remind us that our actions and lifestyles have consequences in distant countries. Yep. <laughs> They're talking about uh, this no SMS day. They're trying to draw attention to years of conflict in Congo, fueled in part by the struggle for the control of uh, Colton mines. The mineral is an essential material in cell phones. And so they're trying to raise awareness, um, you know, that, you know, your, your cell phone is, is causing problems somewhere. Um, you know, not that it's your fault, but just to, to raise awareness. And, um, I, you know, I, I think this is, this is a cool idea. Um, I, it wouldn't work for me. Um, but, uh, I, you know, the, the thing that, that kind of amused me about this though, is what, you know, they're. They're encouraging people to give up uh, web surfing and stuff like that. And and where do they announce that people should should do that? <laughs> On their websites. <laughs> yeah. But also it says uh, another – the Turing Diocese is suggesting people not watch television during Lent. I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, uh, 
Yeah, but again, yeah, the, you know, you talk about announcing on the website. The funny part too is in January, the Vatican launched its own YouTube channel. Yeah, so don't go to that. <laughs> so it's 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 kind of a mixed message, but you know, I the the point of of giving up something for Lent is um is is recognizing what God has given up for us, and it's it's acknowledging that and saying, you know what, because God, you have given up so much for me. Um, this is how I want to express the sorrow for my sin that caused you to have to do that for me. Um, that I'm going to give up something um, to as an expression of that faith. And, and, and that's great. All right. And I don't have a problem with the church suggesting this, saying, you know, here's an idea. Instead of giving up chocolate or, you know, or something else, here's something else that you give up that could have some very positive, you know, for especially for people who have. Um, you know, where if, if it's getting in the way with your family or, or, you know, or you're, you're web surfing instead of working and, you know, and, and, and stuff like that, uh, people that are texting too much and, and all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah. You know, that's not a bad idea. Try it. You know, even if it's, and I kind of like this idea of how about just one day a week, you know, for, and these Fridays, but I, I, you know, I don't see why it would necessarily have to be Fridays. Um, I think Saturday or Sunday would be a, a you know a better day so that you um, can focus more on your family, focus on you know on church. Um, ironically, this week there was also an article that uh, we didn't pick to talk about tonight about uh, churches uh, twittering. <laughs> and in fact, I um, I know somebody that he twitters from church. Uh, he works in the the sound booth at he's at a big mega church and um, and he twitters from there and basically. Um, you get a, a sort of play by play of the pastor's sermon and, you know, and anything else that's, that's going on at the service that day. And it's kind of cool though. Cause you know, I come home from church and, and I get on there and I can you know, sort of read a synopsis of his pastor's sermon and, you know, and it's, it's interesting, you know, it's, it's interesting to see what other people are doing. And I thought, you know, this is a lot of people follow him on Twitter. Uh, he's got a pretty big following and, and, you know, they're following him because he's a podcaster and stuff and they're not following him because he's specifically a Christian, but this is a way that he lives out his faith. And I thought, you know, I've got people in our congregation that take notes, um, on my sermons and that. And I thought, you know, this is a, this is like taking notes, but it's taking notes publicly and sharing it with others. So I thought that was kind of a cool idea. You know, other people say, well, no, you really shouldn't do that. Um, you know, you should, you should focus, but I, I don't know. This seems like a sort of active way of, of focusing on it. You know, you got to be paying attention if you're going to be, you know, jotting down summaries and, and stuff like that. So. Yeah. Uh, you, you guys can follow Dale on Twitter. I'm sorry. I, it's going to take me a while to get on there. So, uh, it's getting well, it's big. It's getting story. big. It's getting big. It's getting bad. Uh, you can you can have it. You'll so, be our, our you'll be our quid. And, anyway, anyway, so wait, uh, one, one more thing with this one. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Um, I just want to. There's a there's a quote here. I have to decide how to experience the Lenten period. I should give up something if I really feel it, not because the church says so. And um, and I don't know that they're necessarily doing that. It's you know from from what I'm seeing, it looks like more of just a suggestion. If you're going to give up something for Lent, which we encourage you to do so, here's something that we think would be a good idea. All right. Um, as long as they're not sort of saying you have to, you know, because really these sort of um, acts of personal piety, no one can really dictate how you do that. Um, you know, every, for everybody, it's different. And, you know, I mean, because to I've had, so there's plenty of people in my congregation that if I told them give up web surfing, they'd say I'd have to get a computer first. So, you know, <laughs> so obviously this doesn't apply to everybody. So, all right, let's go to California. Go to California, and uh, where two um, heterosexual college students have started a um, ballot uh, initiative like Proposition 8. Only, I don't know what the number this one would be, but I, I think it will, will fail. But it's uh, support of this ballot measure want to replace the re- – put the term de- partner, domestic partnership – in uh, all state laws instead of the word marriage Find and while keeping all the rights of a marriage in place. Um, you know, um, this, it would effectively um, 
counteract Proposition Eight because then you wouldn't have any um, you wouldn't have any marriage at all. You would just have uh, de partner domestic partnerships uh, as unions between all couples, regardless of sexual orientation. Of course, waste if you're going to do that. Why? How dare you stop at couples? But anyway, um, you know, if if they're care if they're loving, they're caring. And they're consensual, and you have the right to define yourself by your sexuality. Then how dare you stop at couples? But we won't, you know, get too snarky with this. Um, this, of course, by the way, is actually what's done in Europe. Um, you know, where there is, you know, there there is no church wedding. All marriages are civil, and if you want the church to bless it, you go to get a separate church blessing. Well, this is kind of the opposite of that, though. You want to get married, you go to the church, but here it's just a domestic partnership. Which I, you know, I'm looking at this and I'm going, this is so doomed to fail. Because, first of all, everybody that voted in favor of Proposition 8 is going to vote against this. All right? So they're already doomed from the start. And then everybody that says, um, no, I'm married. I'm not in a domestic partnership. I'm married. Thank you very much. All right. Whether they're for or against gay marriage, you know, I'm sorry, but I'd be pretty offended if, if all of a sudden they decided to redefine my marriage as a domestic partnership. Right. Because then what happens if you move to another um, state? Oh, you're not married. You know? Right. Well, the the, the other thing too is that, I mean, the term domestic partnership, it sounds like a contract then. This doesn't sound like a committed, anything commitment. It's a, a partnership. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's, that's a, you know, I mean, that's, that, that's, that's two companies merging. Right. You know, yeah, that's, uh, Mercedes Benz and, and that's Mercedes Benz and, and, and Chrysler. And we know where, how that, we know how that one worked out. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, it's it's doomed to fail. It's I mean, it's it's sort of a, a pathetic uh, attempt to change what is happened and what is reality. Um, you know, I mean, it's it's really a desperate attempt, though. I mean, come on, just to to eliminate marriage altogether. And because the thing is, all right, here's the reality. In uh, now my understanding, and maybe somebody in California can correct me on this, please email us, all right? The way that the, the laws are set up, homosexuals already have all of the, the same rights as, um, it, in, in, in fact, in most states, as, you know, any, any state that has these sort of civil unions and stuff like that, they already pretty much have the same rights as a married couple. It's just not called marriage. And uh, in a lot of states, it is in, in California, definitely. Mm-hmm. I mean, although you know, everybody's upset, you know, that there's this huge outcry. The reality is, is you know, it left in place this domestic partnership law, which is basically the same thing, but mar- of marriage, except the word marriage. Right. So you're not even gonna get. I mean, a lot of homosexuals are gonna vote against this. Because they're going to say, well, we already have that. You know, right. we want marriage. We want it to be called marriage. All right. So, you know, that's, I mean, that's what we're talking about here. This isn't, you know, you hear the, the stories about, well, okay, what if, you know, these two guys are, are you know, a gay couple and they're in a committed relationship for 50 years and then one of them goes uh, to the emergency room and or is in critical um uh, you know, condition or whatever, and and the other one can't go visit him, you know, and and stuff like that. Like, no, 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 no. that's not the case. They already have those rights, you know, and and I don't have a problem with giving those kind of rights. I've been uh, in favor for a long time of uh, what I call a um, honorary family member, um, which wouldn't. Or it can be, um, or you can even, you know, okay, but that's obviously, well, what about, uh, making medical decisions and things like that. Guess what? There's such a thing called durable power of attorney. Right. And, or health proxy. Yeah. 
and you can make let anyone be your health proxy. Yeah. So, so again, yeah, there's all kinds of things like that you can legal instruments that can be executed to make that happen. Yeah. So it's it's not that anyone's rights are being taken away. This is strictly a matter of how do you define marriage, right? <laughs> and, and that's all it is. It's not a rights thing, right? And that's what I keep hearing. It's rights, 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 rights. You're against human rights. No. This is my definition of marriage. All right. right. And it's how do you f define the term? And that's all it is. You know, sometimes I amaze even myself. Yeah, that's for sure. So, but okay. You might define it differently. I'm kind of glad we, yeah, maybe you do. Uh, actually, uh, I was glad we left on this, uh, ended on this question because uh, last week we talked about the ELCA and, uh, um, you know, and things, and we talked to, we shared George's um, email, and we got another email from George. And uh, he uh, he says, uh, your discussion, it says, thanks for reading my email at the end of your podcast and your kind comments. Um, your discussion about how churches are declining in membership is interesting. There are quite a few articles in ELC Magazine, the Lutheran, about that subject. There's also a sad note that the creator of Davy and Goliath passed away. Turns out she was an alum of Augustana College, my wife's Marsha's alma mater. I received your podcast on iTunes. I play it on a desktop PC. The resolution is good. Dale's image is sharp and clear, but Jim seems to be a bit out of focus. Yeah, that's all right. That's computer. I'm, that's just I'm sharp yeah. and clear. You know, I, you know, I, I'm real sharp. I'm clear. Jim, he's kind of out of focus. Yeah. <laughs> the video so. tracks are well in sync with the audio. Skype seems to be doing a good job for you. Sure seems like evangelism before a little word for U.S. Lutherans. Uh, sadly, it often is. Uh, I remember one time doing some evangelism out in the um, uh, O'Hare Airport when I was in uh, uh, either early college or late high school. Ran into a group of Jews for Jesus out there who were doing broadsides. And they really, they were like, you're Lutheran? And you're street witnessing? Lutherans are street witnessing? And I just really was, a, just a really, really kind of blew them away. They just didn't know, we couldn't believe we did that. Hey, the founder of Jews for Jesus, Steve Cohen, is also the founder. Um, he left Jews for Jesus and founded uh, the LCMS Apple of His Eye ministry, which is kind of a Lutheran version of the same thing. So, yep. <laughs> but yeah, it's... Unfortunately, that's the case. But speaking of that, we got another one. Uh, you probably didn't get this one, Jim, because it came in via um, via a, a different link. Um, but this is this is somebody who's written to us before. I don't have a name. All I have is email an email address, and I'm not going to share that publicly. Um, but uh, it says I watch on a small iPod, and I liked the get it out, get it right. One problem I see is lay people afraid to get it out for fear they might make a mistake. All right. And yeah, that, I mean, that's true. And, and sometimes, and this, that whole um, discussion about doctrine versus evangelism, I think sometimes people, you know, the, the, the whole debate aside are afraid I'm going to get my doctrine wrong, you know? Well, you know what, there's, here, here, and here's my answer to this. And I, and I hope people will share this if you like it. Um, and, and that is, we are not called to be experts. We are called to witness, all right? When you call somebody um, on the stand at a trial as a witness, what you're asking is to tell them, tell me what you know, all right? Tell me, you know, your observation of the situation, okay? So, you know, if, if, if you're worried about the, the specific details, you can always say, well, I'm not sure, but... I can ask my pastor and I'll get back to you or, you know, I'll look it up or, you know, or whatever. You know, I'll say, don't be afraid to say, I don't know. All right. Cause I'll tell you, there's plenty of times that I say, I don't know. And I have to get Just back. Just like how many times he says that on the show. <laughs> this is true. But, uh, you know, no, seriously, I would agree. You know, don't, don't get so hung up in, in getting it absolutely right. Um, I've heard plenty of pastors from the pulpit say some really dumb things, uh, and not be quite right. I mean, so, um, you know, share what you know, and that's the important thing. Um, what's well, sorry to hear though, that the, the, the creator of Davy and Goliath, uh, you know, it's, 
that show is so well is so beloved. Uh, it, I was in a um, store and the guy had Davy and Goliath T-shirts, and he said he had no. You wouldn't believe how many people came in, looked at all those shirts, and said, "Well, I don't know, Davy." <laughs> <laughs> just like he said, everybody did. Yeah. And the guy owned it was Jewish. Uh, you know, he just. Um, oh, it's like it's, he, he loves Davy Goliath. I mean, it really yes. is. And um, I mean, uh, a few years ago, they had a great Davy and Goliath uh, Mountain Dew commercial. Yeah, that Davy and Goliath were on a Dave, Mountain Dew commercial a few years ago. Hmm. Google it. I'm sure it's still out there on YouTube okay. somewhere. I'm sure, I'm sure. Cool. I'll have to find that. Um, uh, other comments, other stories, other things, always welcome. Podcast at crossfeednews.com. Thanks, everybody. Um, please also let us know. I've, I've increased the file size. Um, Jim's fuzzy because of my low bandwidth. We're working on that, but I'm not making any promises at this point. Uh, so sorry about that. Um, but uh, let us know because I have increased the video uh, specifically. Um, the, I've increased the file size to about uh, uh, pushing triple, um, double to triple the, the size it used to be. If it's a problem for you, let me know. So far, we've we've basically one person that watches on the on his computer screen, which means he's benefiting from the larger file size, and one person that watches it on the iPad who, who's not really benefiting from it. So, um, you know, let us know, uh, everybody else out there. And a reminder: uh, we talked about Twitter before. Uh, Crossfeed News. I've got quite a few extra people um, have been following me. Twitter's really becoming mainstream more and more. Uh, so, if you are a, a Twitter user, uh, give me a follow. If you already have. Uh, please uh, send me a note. Let me know that um, that you watch the show. I'd, I'd love to know because um, I think most of the people that follow me don't watch the show. Uh, so if you do, or I mean, watch or listen, uh, please let me know. So thanks everybody for um, for tuning in. And uh, no show next week. Uh, I've got some stuff going on, and uh, so we won't be able to uh, won't be able to do the show next week. So we'll be we'll be back in two weeks, uh, give or take. So thanks okay. and. Uh, Good night and God bless. Is there a problem, Davy? Well, Dad, there was only one do left. Tommy said it was his, I said it was mine, and we began to fight, and it was wrong. We're sorry. Boys, why don't you give me the Mountain Dew? Ooh, ooh, ooh. <sighs> now let that be a lesson to you. What just happened here? We got hosed, Tommy. We got hosed. Oh, Davey.